Hi guys, Juliana here. Um, I'm actually being a little bit controversial today because something I've wanted to do for a while is paint on a book cover, as in like not on the dust jacket, but under the dust jacket. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you are not a fan of this entire concept, just click off the video, okay? It doesn't have to concern you. Okay, cool, moving forward. Basically, I didn't bring a book to paint with me to college, even though I knew that I wanted to do this for a video because I am just dumb. So <laughs> um, I stole this book from my friend Taylor who got it for one of her classes and it's called When Breath Becomes Air and apparently it's a pretty popular book. I looked up a summary and apparently it's a memoir slash autobiography of a neurosurgeon who got diagnosed um, with lung cancer, which seems kind of like a lot, um, but apparently it's a really beautiful book. So I asked Taylor if there was any like imagery that she remembered from the book specifically, and she said that in the epilogue there was a really beautiful word portrait, if you will, of magnolia trees in the person's backyard. So I decided that I would decorate the cover with flowers from a magnolia tree. Like always, I of course just looked up a picture on the internet to copy of a magnolia tree because one, I don't really know what those look like, especially not from memory, and two, I always need a reference picture. So I looked up a picture of magnolias on like Google and then copied that for this image. And to paint the actual book cover, I decided to just kind of go with acrylics because like one, that's the only type of paint I brought with me to college, but also two, I thought it would be easiest to work with for a book cover and like a more simple art process. Yeah. Also like going into this, I just genuinely had no faith in myself. I really genuinely thought that there was no way that I would pull this off and that it would end up looking bad, but that it was okay because she bought the book like used from Thrift Books, which is an online bookseller. Great place to get textbooks, by the way. But yeah, it came like without a dust jacket and was like a few dollars. So I thought, you know, not a high risk situation. So I didn't expect that much of myself, but I was pleasantly surprised. I was incredibly pre pleasantly surprised by my ability to just like pull out these acrylic paints that I almost never use and just use them and like not to get preachy but like i feel like that's a testament to just like do things just try things you yeah you do it because it turns out that a lot of times you will be successful at things that you don't actually think you can be successful at so that's really cool in a moment here i'm just gonna let you like vibe out and watch me paint and listen to the music but I also want to make a quick note on like how I mix the colors because when I used to watch painting videos, I always wanted to know how the person mixed the colors, etc. So I had, I think, three colors that went into making the actual magnolia, which were like bright blue, bright red, and white. And then I kind of mixed them together in varying degrees of redness and like whiteness <laughs> to create the different shades so that it all looked pretty cohesive. And I think that the dark background that I painted under the flowers really helped the white look more opaque or something. So yeah, I'm very happy with how that turned out. And then I went on to the leaves and the sticks and things and kind of just did the same thing. I added a little bit of green with some burnt sienna and then some yellow ochre and a little bit of black just to get that good variation of colors. And then I kind of just like fudged my way through it. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. So anyway, enjoy watching me paint. I'll see you in a moment.
over me is back to tell you about my lettering process for the cover i love lettering it's like one of the easiest things to do that i consider art but i am very scared of serif fonts but the original cover for where breath becomes air is written in a serif font so i wanted to try to emulate that on this cover so we went for it we went for it I looked up a lowercase serif alphabet just on Google once again. No Pinterest this time, strangely. I just went straight for Google. But yeah, I think it kind of turned out okay. I'm very happy with it. Honestly, the part of this lettering that I'm most upset with post finishing it is that breath looks stupid for some reason, which is ridiculous because what I do when I like have fun doing artsy lettering most often is do either a calligraphy or a cursive type font so the fact i think the fact that that was the part that looked the most janky after all of this really annoyed me but the rest of it i'm very happy with it doesn't look like absolutely perfect some of the letters are slanted but it was really hard to sketch out the letters on the book without like making a mark i think you can kind of see where the pencil indented so yeah i was dealing with that trouble and also, sorry about this lighting here. I couldn't see because of the shadows where I was supposed to draw the line, yeah. Also, again, the eye in air kind of looks like a one, but I think you get the gist of it. Like, it's pretty clear that it's supposed to say air. And also, this pen was being kind of janky, where like in the middle of the stroke, it would not fill in the white. But other than that, I think it looks very cool. And here is the finished product. Enjoy these artsy shots and please be as shocked as I am that this kind of looks kind of good. Who knew? Who knew? God, crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and coming along on my art journey. Let me know what book I should deface next, question mark, or yeah, subscribe, drop me a like. Bye.